his soul. Well, fans, as we approach our main event of the evening, we extend a special welcome to the brave men and women serving around the world and joining us tonight on AFN, the American Forces Network. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for the featured bout of the evening. Please welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. First, tonight's challenger, the two-division champion of the world, the Jackal, Guillermo El Chacal Rigandao. Guillermo Regan down. He's been a pro for 12 years. He turned pro at age 28. He said he wants to become the oldest world champion in the history of the bantamweight division. He said if Casimero feels like he can knock me out, well, I don't do much talking, but we'll see if he can back up his words here tonight. He's a gold medalist, his only blemish coming to Vasily Lomachenko. He has rattled off three straight wins since that defeat including two of the three being stoppage victories. Riggendown working with Ronnie Shields. Ronnie said Riggendown has really been performing at such a high level in training camp. We just have to stick to the game plan, remain on the outside, and use his pure boxing ability to frustrate the heavy-handed Filipino world champion in John Riel Casimero. Guillermo Rigondeaux, one of the most decorated amateurs ever to lace up the gloves, aims to become just the eighth fighter in history to win a world title past age 40. And now making his way to the ring from the Philippines, the colorful and defending WBO Bantamweight Champion of the World, John Riel. Cuadro Alas Casimero. John Riel Casimero being led to the ring by Easy Mill. He said he's going to be the man to retire. Guillermo Rigondeaux tonight. He predicts a third round knockout. This will be his second title defense. Six straight wins by knockout. And you listen to the favorable response from the Filipino fans here at Dignity Health Sports Park. Casimero looking for a signature win. He's only fought one southpaw over the past 10 years. And in his last 17 fights, that being Solani Tete, he knocked out Tete in three rounds. Casimero, a 66% knockout percentage. He's heavy handed, he's fast, he's unorthodox, and he believes he will be able to really put on a definitive statement against Guillermo Rigondeau here tonight. You see the champions, Casimero, Inouye, and Donair. That is some elite company. Let's take a look at our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening here in Southern California. You see that Casimero is eight years younger than Rigondeau. Rigondeau has the height and the reach advantage. Unbelievable that Casimero is five foot two and a half, but he packs a heck of a punch. Rules of our main event. There is no three knockdown rule. The referee or the doctor can stop the fight. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. 
and a fight is official after four rounds have been completed. Main event time here in Southern California. To extend the pageantry, we send it to our ring announcer here is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to Dignity Health Sports Park here in Carson, California, as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by TGB Promotions and Showtime, sponsored by GEICO. This bout is sanctioned by the WBO, the President Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor Richard DeCure, along with the California State Athletic Commission, the Chairman John Carvelli, Executive Officer Andy Foster. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside, from Nevada, Tim Cheatham. Also from Nevada, Robert Hoyle. Easy and work. from California, Daniel Sandoval. Introducing our third man to the ring, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Jerry Cantu. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Bantamweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Carson, California, it's showtime! Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold trunks with white trim, fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Santiago de Cuba. He weighed in at 117 and one half pounds. His record stands at 20 wins, one loss, one no contest, with 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former two-division world champion and the former 122-pound champion of the world, introducing the jackal, Guillermo El Chacal Rigondeo. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing silver trunks with orange trim, hailing from Ormoc City, Leyte in the Philippines. He weighed in at the bantamweight limit of 118 pounds. His record stands at 30 wins, four losses, 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight in the second defense of his title, here is the three-division world champion and the current reigning and defending WBO bantamweight champion of the world, introducing John Real Quadro Alas Casimero. Referee in charge now to give instructions. Ray Corona. Jerry can too. Jerry can too. No worries. Let's go. Gentlemen, I want this. Gentlemen, you are giving your instructions in the dressing room. Estás recibiendo sus instrucciones en el camerino. Touch him up. So it is our main event here at Dignity Health Sports Park. Guillermo Rigondeau looking to make history 
by becoming John. the oldest world champion in the Bantamweight division. But John, John Riel Casimero, the, the Filipino, has other plans. Well, and we'll see if he can follow through on his prophecy on finishing off Guillermo Rigondeaux by the third Are you ready? round. Listo. And we are underway. Regan Down is a southpaw. Conventional is Casimero. Casimero, he's only fought one southpaw in the past 10 years. He finished off Zolani Tete in the third round. Just starting the first 35 seconds. There's a straight left by Regan Dow. Casimero looking for his opening. Incidentally, I believe Eddie Reynoso, the trainer Canelo Alvarez in the front row, watching this action. They have their training camp in San Diego, so only about an hour and a half drive. There's a left hook by Casimero, coming up on the midway point of this, our first round. Casimero is waiting for that big shot. There's a straight left that gets through the guard by Regendow. Casimero stepping forward. There's a right to the body by Casimero. 70 seconds to go here in the first. Casimero looking to cut off the ring and make Regendow uncomfortable. Casimero, world champion, three divisions, big shots. And down goes Regan Dow. No, knockdown. no, no knockdown. knockdown. No knockdown. There was no knockdown. Come on. Don't do that again. You understand me? He's on the floor. Ready? Box. Jerry no Cotton, too. Saying, oh, big shot. Casimero thinks he's got Regan Dow hurt. That was an inadvertent on, shot behind the head. Final 35 seconds of the first round. Left hook by Casimero that misses. Final moments of the first. Big right hand partially blocked by Rigandau. And we head towards the second. Take a look at some of the action. There was that right and another right. Regan Dow was rocked. He tried to hold on. And then I think what happened was the fact that Casimiro, I think, pushed him down. Side to side. Here, guys. Here, guys. Here, guys. Somebody got. Yo, man, y'all got to help me. Well, Roddy Shields was telling Rigandau, you need to move your head side to side. Curious to see once again if we can see that sequence, if that was an actual knockdown. It was not ruled a knockdown, but from our perspective, Bakasi Mero no doubt is very aggressive and wants to bring an abrupt end to the night of Guillermo Rigandau. Roddy Shields told me yesterday, and I was speaking to him that Regan Dow just has to fight on the outside and he gets hit. 
You see Regan now just one punch landed. Casimiro, six of 27. Big shot, best punch of the fight so far for Regan down. Only a second shot landed, but out of the two, that was certainly an eye-catching shot. But Casimiro still looks to come forward. Big straight left again by Regan now snapping back the head of Casimiro. Jab right to the belly by Rigandau. Rigandau might be finding his groove here. He has looked better here in the second round. There's a right to the body by Casimero. 80 seconds to go here in the second. The uh, favorable and the large Filipino fan base here in Los Angeles, clearly behind the 32-year-old world champion in John Riel Casimero, under a minute to go here in the second. Casimero ate a couple of big straight lefts. There is a left right to the abdomen by Rigandau. This is a pace that favors the Olympic gold medalist and former world champion, the 40-year-old in Guillermo Rigandau. It is a slow, methodical pace. Good jab by the Cuban in Rigandau. Casimiro still stalking Rigandau and the fans booing Rigandau for not wanting to engage. A left hook misses for Casimiro. That ends the second. And boos echoing here at Dignity Health Sports Park. So let's go back on the, the first round, what was not ruled a knockdown. So a shot on the top of the head, okay, so behind that, so they were rigging down. Yeah, that was not a knockdown. So as we take a look at it again, but before that sequence, Casimiro did land a heavy right hand. But it was clear, especially with that, that no knockdown and shots behind the head. Round number three, this one's scheduled for 12. Well, this is a very interesting round because Casimiro said he's going to end the night of Regan down in the third round or before. So we'll see if he can make his prediction reign true. And now he went to South Pole momentarily. But the fans were booing Rigandau in the second for not wanting to engage. But at the pace that he was fighting at the second round, it's advantageous for the 40-year-old. There's a left hook by Casimiro. Casimiro literally stalking and running right after Rigandau. As now Casimiro's gone to South Pole. Let's see if Rigandau can adjust. Rigandau missed a counter right hook. You see punches landed through the second round. Casimiro 8 of 44, Rigandau just 6 of 33. Both men just an 18% connect percentage. There's a jab right to the body by Casimero. Coming up on the midway point of this, our third round.
Casimero is the one that is forcing the issue, but Regan now, this is kind of like how he fights, and he knows when you're dealing with a fighter who's won six straight wins by knockout, and that's got the power in his hands, like Casimero who throws winging wild shots, you can engage in a firefight at any point. There's a right hand that was deflected by Regendahl. A jab by Casimero. Now a shot to the chest by Casimero. Regendahl trying to get out of the way. There's a left hook, and now Rigondeaux ties up Casimero. And Jerry Cantu separates the two. This is a game of chess between these two. Casimero wants to go toe to toe. Rigondeaux is fighting at a pace uh, that is not favorable to the fans here in Southern California. We are on to round four, so the third round knockout prediction for John Riel Casimero uh, goes by the wayside. And now Guillermo Rigondeau with that right to the body by Casimero. There's a right to the body by Casimero as Rigondeau looking for his opening, but the fans were cascading boos upon one Guillermo Rigondeau for a lack of activity and work rate. But Rigondeau is such a technician in that ring with such a high level boxing IQ. If you were giving out degrees, Guillermo Rigondeau probably has about two or three doctorates in the ring. There's a shot to the body. They both exchange. Rigondeau with a left. You see power punches through the third round. Casimero, 9 of 38. Rigondeau, 7 of 28. Connect percentages of 25% and 23%. Casimero. Now he has, when he he's, needs to be very careful Watch about that camera, counter left from Regendau. Regendau dispatched of Julio Seja with a counter left hand. He just landed right on the chin of Casimero on the point of the chin. So Regendau does have deceptive power and he has become more of a power hitter as he has entered his 40s. He displayed that in his late 30s, but now at 40. But this is a slow and plodding pace that, again, is more advantageous to the Cuban southpaw in Guillermo Rigondeau. Under a minute to go here in the fourth. But now, can Tassi Merrill start to let his hands go? He's stepping forward, and we'll see if he can cut off the ring. His corner is urging him, go forward, go forward, go forward. Sports Park. 
here in Southern California. But Casimero isn't doing anything either. He's following him around, but he isn't throwing. They are literally just fading towards one another. Final moments of the fourth. We head towards the fifth with more booze here in SoCal. Start bringing the water for me, okay? Got it. Hey, listen, listen. Now look, we can't give away no more rounds, okay? No more rounds to give away. Sit in the middle of the ring. Yeah, sit in the middle of the ring. And here is some of the action from the fourth round. That right to the body by Casimero. Counter left by Rigandel. And Casimero was the one forcing the issue. Ronnie Shields with some sense of urgency and being very brutally honest with Guillermo Rigandau, he said, you cannot give away any more rounds. Round You've given away enough. So we are on to the fifth round. Ray Flores ringside. The WBO Bantamweight Championship of the World is on the line. Jean Riel Casimero making the second defense of his crown against the former world champion Guillermo Rigandau, who's trying to make history and become the oldest Bantamweight champion in history and supersede Nonito Donaire, who did that back at the end of May against Nordino Bali. Total punches landed through four rounds. Casimero 11 of 87, Rigandau 11 of 78. Literally pretty much identical when it comes to connect percentages. Big shots on the inside by Casimero. Watch your heads. Watch your heads. But this has been a selective, the punch selection has been one where are you going to favor? I mean, Casimero's obviously forcing the issue, but they have landed the same amount of punches, but it is Casimero's punches that have done more of the damage, albeit just slightly. There's a right to the body by Casimero, and now Casimero is being more aggressive. And letting his hands go a little bit more compared to that of the fourth. But Ronnie Shields had that moment with Guillermo Rigandau and said, you can't give away any more rounds. Just over the midway portion of the fifth round. Well, Casimero's third round prediction went out the window, but it would still be if he can finish off Guillermo Rigandau or if he can beat him in general, it's a big win. If he can finish him off, well, that sends a statement to the rest of the other Bantamweight champions in the division, including Nonito Donaire, who there was significant talks. There, there were talks twice about Jean Riel Casimero and Nonito Donaire, and that would be an all Filipino clash. There's a left hook to the body by Casimero, getting out of the way is Rigandal. There's a right to the body by Casimero, and now Rigandau ties up. But now you see the power being displayed by John Riel Casimero. Under 30 seconds left here in the fifth. There's a counter left from Rigandau. There's a right to the body by Casimero. And Reagan down, not doing much. And Casimero piling up the points. And that ends the fifth. Basta mo dagandaga na siya. Wala na siya ka position ng sumbag, ha? Basta gadagandagan, wala sa posisyon na. Ha? Magbo-break yan siya, mahulong siya, bantay ka. Ha? Bantay ka, ha? Okay, okay. Bantay ka. Yeah, more piece, more piece, more piece. Okay na, wala na, hop na na, ha? Bantay ka, basta mo break yan siya, ayaw pa sa kagsulod. Ha? Ayaw pa sa kagsulod. Huwata siya, mahulong. Puede estar en el medio un poquito más, pero todo está bien. Let's go, baby, you gotta keep working now. Come on. 
Sigue trabajando, Rigo. The guy, 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 the one of the members of his camp in Spanish, they said, you can knock this guy out. He fears your left hand. And the question is, can Rigondeaux, is he going to let his hands go? Casimero has been the one that has been forcing the issues. Total jabs landing thrown through five. Rigondeaux, three of 47. Casimero, all of 49. Unbelievable numbers there. As Rigondeaux has landed just three jabs, none for Casimero. All power punches by the Filipino. We'll see if Rigondeaux decides to get more aggressive. But that's not his game. His game is to be methodical like use your jab, set up that straight left, and then when your opponent makes a mistake, then you make him pay. I don't think we're seeing an old Guillermo Rigondeaux. I just think this is a Guillermo Rigondeaux that is going back to the days when he would use his high-level boxing IQ to frustrate you. But the problem is he's dealing with an aggressive champion in John Real Casimero, who is landing the bigger shots. So I have it, I'm, and I'm not a judge by any means, but I would consider the fact that Casimero's probably ahead, you know, four rounds to two, five to one, just from my standpoint. Just over the midway portion of the sixth round. Rigondeaux aiming to become the oldest Bantamweight champion in history at 40 years of age. John Riel Casimero, he knows that if he's able to get past Rigondeaux, bigger fight, natural opportunities and unification fights potentially await in the wings against the likes of Nonito Donaire and possibly Naoya Inoue. Final 39 seconds of the sixth. The three division world champion, John Real Casimero and Guillermo Rigondeaux matching up. Casimero's won world titles at 108, 112, and now here at 118 pounds. There's a counter left from Rigondeaux as Casimero goes barreling into him. John Jerry Con two separates the two. Curious to see what both corners say to their respective fighters as we head towards the second half of the fight between John Real Casimero and Guillermo Rigondeaux. And a little bit of gamesmanship there by Rigondeaux, much to the chagrin of Casimero. Okay, okay, huh? okay listen. Tell him he's too fast for this guy. But he can counter punch him. He's moving too much. He's getting away from his own punches. He's got to stay. he got to stay in the middle. Stay in the middle of the ring and throw punches. He can counter punch him. Huh? Malu Yarana, Malu Yarana. Tobik, Tobik, Tobik. Malu Yarana. Jab Kasaolo is pitched at the end. Okay? Every time he stands still, he goes to the left. And here's the jab after the bell by Rigondeaux and a little jab right there, Bing. And Casimiro goes, come on now, are you kidding me? On to round seven. This one's scheduled for 12 for the WBO Bantamweight Championship held by John Riel Casimiro, the 32-year-old out of the Philippines against Guillermo Rigondeaux from Cuba. And Ronnie Shields continues to urge him as to say, what are you doing? Let your hands go. We want to see more of the straight left. Ronnie was so excited about the training camp that Rigondeaux had. He said Rigondeaux looked in superb shape. He was working with various sparring partners. He was clicking on all cylinders. He goes, I'm amazed that this guy is 40 years of age. 
He is such a ring savant in training camp, but it hasn't been able to be translated in the fight. But we still have a full six rounds to go. So unofficial scorecard has this fight even as three to three. Well, again, that's why I say I am not a judge by any stretch of the imagination. So ringside observers have this fight dead even at 57 apiece heading into the seventh. But from my standpoint, I would favor more the aggressive and the bigger punches of Casimero over the ring generalship of Rigondeaux. Because Casimero is the one who is trying to bait Rigondeaux into the fight and is throwing the more eye-catching punches. And again, Rigondeau, they're, they're pretty much walking around each other. Casimero says, are you gonna fight or what? He literally stands straight up, squared himself up and invited Rigondeau to come to the center of the ring as we have 61 seconds to go in the seventh. And Rigondeau gets out of the way. And the Filipino fans, they are urging Casimero, come on, force the issue. A right to the body misses as Rigondeau gets out of the way. And my mindset as Rigondeau sort of breezes around the perimeter of the ring is that how can you take away the title from the champion if you are not engaging and doing anything whatsoever in the fight. At least here in this seventh round. I have an old school mentality, you have to take the title forcefully from the champion. And Rigondeau enjoys the fact that Casimero swung and missed. This is a very different fight between Casimero and Rigondeau. Mouthpiece, mouthpiece, mouthpiece. Mouthpiece, mouthpiece. Go big, go big. Focus lang. Ayaw, ayaw, sabay siyang dula. Atang-atangi lang siya, atang-atangi lang. Atang-atangi lang, ha? Body. Eh. Eh. What, what, what round is this? Eight? We need, we need this now, man. We're going to take this round now. We're going to take this round now. Here, take this. Come on, let's go to work, man. We gotta go to work. In the middle of the ring, he's right there. Come on. The corner of Guillermo Rigan down Ronnie Shields said, Come on, let's go to work right there in the center of the ring. Ronnie feels that there needs to be more of a work rate from his man in Guillermo Rigandau. Casimero, from his standpoint, I think he's a little bit frustrated. The fact that Rigondeau doesn't want to engage him. I mean, but you kind of saw this coming. But now Casimero just has to go out, and he's got to find him. And he's got to bring more of the fight to Rigondeau because you never know what the judges are thinking. I think Casimero has to turn up the intensity here and see if the legs of Rigondeau are what they appear to be and test the 40 year old's legs because youth is on the side by eight years of Casimero and Casimero has a very he has a large gas tank good condition and now we are in the middle portion of the fight and the booze echoing here at Dignity Health Sports Park a venue that has been home to its fair share of toe-to-toe -to -toe affairs. This is not one of those affairs, but it is a different fight. 100 seconds to go in the eighth. There's a jab, they both exchange jabs. Just over the midway portion of the eighth.
Casimero, he is chasing Rigondeaux. And now a little bit of a slip. I think there's some water in the ring. A left hook, grazing shot by Casimero. 65 seconds to go in the eighth. There's a left to the body by Rigondeaux. Left hook to the body by Casimero. Under 50 seconds to go. We'll see if Casimero can start to put together and string together a combination or two. Stiff jab by Rigondeaux. Rigondeau is just flicking out that jab, moving out of the way. Really isn't sitting down on his punches with the counter left hand. And Casimero's looking at him like, okay, well. A left hook to the body, followed by a right cross from Casimero. Rigondeau was able to get his hand up to partially block that right cross. On to the ninth we go. He's ready. He's frustrated because they can't hit him. But if he don't throw punches, they can't win the fight. Come on, man. Everything, everything is good. Everything is good, but you gotta let him hands go. The movement is Taking good. a look at some of the action. There's that left hook to the body. And Ronnie Shields, and we'll talk about it in the ninth round, but. Ronnie Shields seen exactly what we are seeing. There's a left hook to the body. But he told Rigondeau, let your hands go. Stay right in front of him. He's too fast for the guy. Ronnie wants to see Rigondeau let his punches go. And I think that is as implicit and as clear, concise instruction as you will hear in the corner. Can Rigondeau, will he go out there and do what Ronnie is asking him to. And Ronnie's been urging him since probably about the fourth round. And now Casimero comes out, throwing the combination as Rigondeau pushed down the head of Casimero as the fans continue to echo and voice their displeasure with the Cuban, the former world champion in Rigondeau. Almost a headlock no there. Headlock and, punch, okay? no. and Jerry Cantu says no headlocking whatsoever, but again, the fact that Regan Dow's a southpaw, Casimero is conventional fighter. There's a left hook on the top of the head of Regan Dow, and Casimero now forcing the issue. I think Ronnie is of the mindset to, for Rigondeau to hold his ground and to counter with that left. Have Casimero come forward to him and then counter with the left. But Rigondeau is moving, still going backwards. And they tie up. Casimero steps in with a left hook that misses. I mean, look, Rigondeau is a technical wizard, but is this wizardry going to win him the fight? From my standpoint, the answer is no. But again, I'm not one of the three judges assigned. There's a right to the body by Casimero. Now Casimero tries to throw. Rigondeau ties him up immediately to throw off his rhythm. That's actually a smart move from Rigondeau, but with Rigondeau, what offense are you generating is the operative question. Under a minute to go here in the ninth. <laughs> Left hook misses by Casimero. A left hook upstairs by the 32-year-old champion. 
Ringendahl almost slipped in the corner there of Casimero due to the water. Perspiration from the sweat. And Rigandau ties up and punches weren't even thrown. And Casimero showing his frustration as he throws a left on the inside on the exchange. And Casimero is starting to show physically that he is not happy and he's frustrated with the lack of engagement that Rigandau is providing tonight. Casimero attacking the body. that right to the midsection. Come on, let's go, let's go to work. Here, here, here. Unofficial judges at ringside, unofficially, have Casimero had 86-85, so only ahead by a point. On to the 10th round we go between John Real Casimero, who's making the second defense of his crown against Guillermo Rigandown. Total punches landed, thrown through nine. You see the fact that Rigandown is 31 of 179 for a 17% connect percentage. Casimero, 38 of 224 for a 16% connect percentage. Record past the 10th round, Rigandown is 6-0, and oh. Casimero is just 4-4. Four and four. So you would think that Casimero slows down as the fight progresses. Rigandau is 6-0 and oh, past the 10th. Casimero steps in with that left hook. Rigandau using that jab to try to frustrate Casimero. A left hook misses for the Filipino. Rigandau stuck that jab right in the midsection of Casimero. a right to the body by Casimero. 80 seconds to go here in the 10th. There's a right to the body by Casimero. There's a counter right hook by Rigandau, but Casimero, I thought, was off balance. Rigandau, so smart inside that ring. He knows every inch of it. And Casimero waiting on the outside. He knows that Rigandau is waiting to counter with that left hand. Rigandau's legs still, he looks just as fresh here in the 10th as he did earlier in the fight. Hasn't really taken much damage against the hard-hitting Filipino champion and John Real Casimero. There's a counter left from Rigandau. On to the championship rounds we go. Rego, you can you can knock this guy out, man. I'm telling you, you're setting him up. He's setting. And there's the jab by Rigandau and Casimero advancing forward. There's that right hook on the top of the head of Casimero. Okay, 
okay? That's the only chance right now. We got no other chance. We got two rounds, that's it. Okay, let's go, let's go. There is a belief in the corner of Guillermo Rigondeau that they feel Rigondeau can knock out Casimero with the left. Let's go. But will Rigondeau elect to throw it with more frequency as we head towards these championship rounds, as Rigondeau is trying to become the oldest Panama champion in the history of 40 years of age, John Real Casimero looking to defend his WBO Bantamweight Championship for a second straight time and then potentially move closer to unification matchups against the likes of Nonito Donaire, a fellow Filipino fighter, and also Naoya Inoue out of Japan. Here's a left hook that misses by Casimero. Well, unofficial ringside observers have this fight very close. So these final two rounds, the championship rounds, could decide the fight. Well, Casimero, no doubt, has so much respect for Rigondeau, and this is something you don't hear often at a place known as the War Grounds, booze from a lack of activity between two prize fighters. 100 seconds to go here in the 11th. Casimero swinging for the fences, getting out of the way with ease was Regendau. Now we're at the midway portion of the 11th. Regendau undefeated after 10 rounds and Casimero 4-4. Four and four just step back, just step back, go. Over the course of past the 10th. Stop, go, no, 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 no. And a little bit of wrestling there. With Rigondeau and Casimero. Clean the fight up. Let's go. Jerry Cantu telling Rigondeau in Spanish, clean the fight up. He admonished both men. There's a right to the body by Casimero. Tip jab by Rigondeau. And the booze echoing here at Dignity Health Sports Park. Now throws a straight left that misses. Casimero again stalking Rigondeau around the ring, and that will conclude the 11th. This is round 12 coming. Round 12 coming? Yeah. Okay. They don't even know what round it is in the corner. That's the only chance. Okay? Allow himself that chance. He got to allow himself a chance to do that. Okay, come on, let's go. We go get it, we go get it. Here, here. Take this. This is the 12th and final round. Unofficial score has Rigondeau ahead 105-104 with this technical brilliance. Total power punches landed thrown through 11. Rigondeau 25 of 93 for a 26% connect percentage. Casimero 39 of 152 for a 25% connect percentage power punch wise. So a 14 punch advantage for Casimero power punch wise over Rigondeau. I think you could see it. I mean, who knows how the judges have this one scored. I think it's a close fight. As Casimero 
looking to defend his championship for a second time. He's a three division world champion. As he's in there with a master of the sweet science in Guillermo Rigondeaux, who at 40 years of age is clamoring to try to become the oldest Bantamweight champion in history and just the eighth fighter in history to capture a world title past age 40. There's a straight left by Rigondeaux. I think we could be in a position where scores can be all over the place. Casimero stalking Rigandau again. Rigandau sticks out that jab. A jab for Casimero as he tries to enter against Rigandau. If you're Casimero, though, even if your jab isn't landing, jab your way on the inside, and nobody's worried about being countered by Rigandau with that counter left hand, but you've got to be busy. And now Casimero puts his glove on his chin and has to say, come on now. Let's bring it. Final 60 seconds of this WBO Bantamweight Championship fight here at Dignity Health Sports Park, known as the War Grounds. It has been a tactical fight between these two. It has been more science instead of violence in this fight. Violence is what John Real Casimero professed he was going to do to Rigandau. He said, I was gonna, I'm was going to knock him out in the third round. I'm going to make him retire after I beat him on Saturday night. Rigandau said, try to do it. And Rigandau has hung around in the fight. And we head towards the bell. Well, Casimero retain his championship, or will Rigandau become the oldest Bantamweight champion in history? To the scorecards we go. And uh, the corner of Rigandau goes over to the corner of Casimero, and they sort of shoot. They told him to go away. And Rigandau feels he has victory within his grasp. Well, the corner of Casimero said all he did was he was running. And uh, I think that this fight can go either way. I could even see a draw. I would hate to be a judge in this particular instance. Casimero, 32 years of age. You know that if he's successful tonight, he would love to have unification matchups against the likes of Nonito Donaire and Naoya Inoue. And here's how the fight unfolded. A very, it, it was a unique fight. It, it did provide snippets of action. Total punches landed, thrown in the fight. Rigandau, 44 of 221 for a 19% connect percentage. Casimero, 47 of 297 for a 15% connect percentage. Casimero was the busier fighter, throwing 76 more punches than that of Rigandau, and he landed three punches more, but numerically, they are so close, and I think that is emblematic of what this fight was. It is a close fight. And there was that counter left from Rigandau, and we await the decision from Jimmy Lennon Jr., and they are taking some time to tabulate the scorecards. And that says to me, that we have a close fight with such an extended period of time occurring 
from the verdict to be rendered. Jimmy Lennon has the scorecard. He's looking it over right now. I think he's even doubling and double and triple checking it. Now he comes to the center of the ring. He has it. And we await what the verdict will be. Rigandau gets up and he is getting booed mercifully here in Southern California. And he loves it. He's soaking in all the boos. I think he enjoys being public enemy number one. And now Casimero gets up on the turnbuckle pad and he's getting the love from the fans because they feel he was the one who forced the issue all night long. Jimmy Lennon has the scorecard. And again, this is prize fighting. Who knows what the judges have the fight scored, how they have it scored. I think it was a close fight, and who knows? And now here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies with the decision. After 12 rounds of action, we have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge of ringside, Tim Cheatham scores about 115 to 113 in favor of Guillermo Rigandau. Judge at ringside, Daniel Sandoval scores about 116 to 112 in favor of John Riel Casimero. And a third judge, Robert Hoyle, scores about 117 to 111 in favor of the winner and still champion, John Riel. Cuadro a las So John Riel Casimero picks up a split decision victory over Guillermo Rigandau. As we take a look at the scorecards, 115-113 for Regandown, 117-111 for Casimero, and 116-112. So those who scored the fight in favor of Casimero felt that him being more of the aggressor in forcing the issue was the difference, and it wasn't even close when it came to the judges who had the fight in favor of Casimero. They had an 8-4.